The last day of middle school, cherry blossoms gently drifting through the air. Aijo, our ever hopeful hero, stands before the girl of his dreams. But alas, his confession is met with a heart-shattering no, making it his 100th rejection. Eyes brimming with tears, spills his woes to his friend, admitting his dream to find that special someone seems more like a fantasy. In a fit of desperation, Ajo finds himself at a local shrine, his voice earnest as he prays for a high school life filled with romance. And who would have thought? The god of the shrine casually pops out, as if he's been waiting for this moment, and drops the bombshell, not one, but 100 soulmates await Ijo in high school. Our boy's reaction? A mix of awe and skepticism as he half jokes about torching the shrine if it turns out to be a divine prank. High school begins, and Ijo's heart is thumping with anticipation. Then, bam! He bumps into Hikari and Karane. It's like Cupid shot an arrow straight through the scene because these two are smitten on the spot. Hakari, ever the drama queen, pretends to twist her ankle to earn sympathy from Aijo. And when Karen A, green with jealousy, mimics the act, Aijo comically bonks himself for causing his soulmates such distress. Escorting two love-struck girls to the infirmary, Aijo's head is spinning. This is not how he imagined his first day. The journey is interrupted when Hakari and Karana catch wind of a rumor. Find a four-leaf clover, and your love confession will hit the mark every time. Off they sprint, determined. Post-school bell, Aijo stumbles upon the clover hunters, still on their quest. Touched by their dedication, he hands Karane a cool can of soda. And wouldn't you know it? That tsundere charm of hers hits him like a lightning bolt of love. With a flustered thank you, Karane zooms away, leaving Aijo. He then offers another can of drink to Haraki, but she had a plan. To share an indirect kiss with Aijo by drinking from the same can. Aijo, oblivious to Hikari's intentions, drinks half the soda and passes it back to her. However, in a sudden jolt of panic mixed with excitement, her grip slips and the can crashes to the ground. Yet, even in this clumsy moment, romance finds a way. Aijo extends his handkerchief to Hakari to clean the mess. The handkerchief is barely in her hands when she clasps Aijo's hand, her eyes locked onto his, and she pours out her feelings, confessing her love directly. But before Aijo can react, Karane makes her dramatic return. She accuses Hakari of sneaking ahead in the unspoken queue of confessions, and, with her pride, wrestling with her affection, Karane's confession tumbles out in her distinct tsundere manner, reluctantly admitting her feelings to Aijo. With the weight of his unique predicament, he returns to the shrine, seeking guidance from the divine. He presents his dilemma to the god. Two confessions, and the startling reality of 100 soulmates. The god, with an apologetic tone, admits that his distraction by a television drama led to Ijo's name being stamped onto 100 soulmate certificates. The twist? A grim fate awaits those who remain unlinked to Ijo. They are doomed to perish. Ijo's mind races. Initially, he contemplates a double life, secretly dating both Hakari and Karane to prevent the dire consequences spelled out by the god. But as he faces the girls, his conscience clears the path. In a moment of raw honesty, Aijo proposes the unthinkable, a three-way relationship. With earnest eyes and heartfelt words, he explains his deep affection for both of them, presenting the four-leaf clover he had found. Moved by his dedication, both Hakari and Karane consent to this unconventional relationship, with Aijo's in a promise of happiness and unity. The morning sun peeking through as Aijo strolls down the street with his two girlfriends. They're holding hands, and there's this magical vibe in the air, the kind that makes everyone around wish they were part of this love bubble. Hakari bats her lashes and asks Aijo to call her by her first name. Not to be outdone, Karane asks for the same. So there they are, 
walking like they're the stars of a romantic show, calling each other by their first names, and setting the whole street a blushing. At school, they catch the vice principal in action, giving a chase that ends with a shocker, a French kiss as a punishment for running in the halls. This stirs up something in Hakari and Karine. They make it their mission to win Aijo's first ever kiss. Lunchtime hits, and it's like a scene out of a cute cooking show. Hakari feeds Aijo homemade egg rolls, and just as you think it couldn't get any sweeter, Karine tries to feed him her cookies. But oops, she pokes him in the eye. Then, as Hakari leans in with a Pocky game challenge, Karine jumps in too, and yep, you guessed it, the other eye gets poked. Karine, ever the creative one, spins this into a hilarious excuse. She claims Ijo's got a cold, and obviously the only cure is a kiss. So now, it's a race. Which girl will steal Ijo's first kiss while they both argue that they're the best medicine? However, Ijo's got a playful plan up his sleeve. A blindfold kissing game. That way, no one would know who gets the first kiss. The promise is simple. No peeking or cheating. The game kicks off, but whoops, Aijo accidentally grabs Hakari, and not in a good way. The first round, a total flop. They try again, and this time a sneaky cat confuses Karine by touching her inappropriately, leading to a case of mistaken identity where Aijo ends up taking the hits instead of kisses. The kissing game's going all sorts of wrong, and the girls start to bicker, each one pointing fingers at the other. Aijo, in a wild move, almost gives up his first kiss to the vice principal just to stop the girls from fighting. But in the nick of time, Hakari and Karane save him from the French kissing monster. Eventually, they realize they'd rather work together than fight. Feeling the love, they decide on a three-way kiss, a perfect solution to their quirky problem. Next day, things are cool again. Hakari and Karine are chilling in the library, flipping through cookbooks to find the yummiest recipes for Aijo. But as soon as Aijo steps away, he bumps into another girl, and bam! He feels that now familiar love spark. Looks like Aijo's life's about to get even more tangled up. Aijo meets Shizuka, his third soulmate. She's the epitome of shyness, using a book to point out words as her way of communicating. Aijo, curious and intrigued, asks for book recommendations, and Shizuka, with a gentle smile, hands him a towering stack of books. But, oh no, Aijo doesn't have a library card. In a heartwarming gesture, Shizuka loans him her personal favorite book. Later, Aijo can't help but feel touched seeing Hakari and Karane diving into cookbooks, all to make delicious meals for him. As night falls, Aijo immerses himself in Shizuka's book. It's a captivating story of a brave knight rescuing a princess from a fire-breathing dragon. Their eyes meet, and it's love at first sight, yet they're torn apart by her arranged marriage. The tale tugs at Aijo's heartstrings, keeping him hooked through the night. Returning to school, Aijo hands back the book to Shizuka, who shyly offers him the sequel. A simple act of kindness follows. Aijo treats her to a can drink, and they bond over their favorite parts of the story. He admires her unique way of communicating through the book, and Shizuka, for a brief moment, drops her guard to thank him. She confides that people often avoid her because of her quietness. A light bulb flicks on in Aijo's mind, and he decides to borrow both volumes of the book. It's a small yet significant step towards understanding and accepting Shizuka's world. A couple of days later, Shizuka, with a mix of excitement and nervousness, plans to give Aijo the third volume of the book. But fate has a twist in store. She discovers Aijo's relationship with Hakari and Karane. This revelation dredges up painful memories from Shizuka's past, reminding her of times when she was bullied and ignored due to her unique way of communicating. In the library, Aijo meets with Shizuka again. He has a plan to bridge the gap between them. He introduces her to a text-to-speech app and sends her a file with the entire text of the book, 
The idea is for her to speak without breaking eye contact, a thoughtful gesture that recognizes her need for connection. Shizuka is stunned to realize that Aijo must have transcribed the book manually, a labor of love that speaks volumes. Overwhelmed with emotion, Shizuka confesses her feelings to Aijo, who, in a moment reminiscent of the night in the story, reciprocates her love. Later, Aijo faces a crucial moment with Hakari and Karane. He asks them to accept Shizuka as his third girlfriend, making a dramatic vow to commit seppuku if he fails to be a good boyfriend to all three. The girls gather around, each taking a moment to introduce themselves and share a bit about their lives. As they chat, Aijo shares some adorable quirks he's noticed about each of them. He mentions Shizuka's rhythmic foot tapping when engrossed in a book, Hakari's alluring expression when deep in thought, and Karana's cute habit of twirling her hair when she feels shy. These heartfelt observations bring out blushes and giggles from the girls, drawing them closer to Aijo, showcasing Aijo's attentive nature and the unique traits that make each girl special. Noticing Shizuka's reticence and feeling her left out of the group's dynamics, Aijo comes up with a fun idea, a game of old maid with a playful twist. The loser of each round must endure a tickling session from the winner. It's a lighthearted attempt to include Shizuka and help her feel more at ease with everyone. The girls agree, seeing it as a chance to bond and enjoy some laughs together. Karine is the first to lose, and Aijo's tickling sends her into a fit of laughter, bordering on the erotic. When Hakari loses the next round, she struggles to contain her giggles, pleading with Aijo to stop before she loses control. Shizuka's turn brings a pleasant surprise. Her laughter, though coming through a text-to-speech app, adding to the joyous atmosphere. Finally, it's Aijo's turn to be tickled as Shizuka wins the last round. However, Shizuka, in her gentle manner, merely pokes Aijo lightly, eliciting soft chuckles from him. Sensing tension from both Hakari and Karane, Aijo decides to leave the group to let the girls had a heart-to-heart, -heart. and so, Karane encourages Shizuka to speak her mind. Shizuka, gathering her courage, admits feeling plain and boring compared to the vivacious Hakari and fiery Karane. Her honesty touches the other girls deeply, prompting them to reassure her. They insist she's equally adorable and urge her to be more forward in expressing her love for Aijo. As Aijo watches from a distance, relieved to see the girls resolving their differences, he rejoins them, anticipating another round of tickling games. To his surprise, Shizuka shyly requests a kiss instead. Aijo, touched by her boldness, obliges with a gentle head pat, followed by a kiss. Shizuka's reaction is priceless, her mind racing from the unexpected yet tender gesture. Hakari, not one to be left out, seizes her opportunity next, leaning in for her kiss with Aijo. The sweet moment sends her into a similar whirl of emotions. Then, it's Karane's turn. True to her tsundere nature, she initially resists, playfully punching Aijo and calling him Baka. But the tension breaks as Aijo gently kisses her too, eliciting a soft, blushing response from Karane. With these intimate moments, marking a new chapter in their relationships. Yet, with 97 more soulmates to discover, the story is far from over. How will Aijo manage these complex relationships? Stay tuned for more in the next episode.